cleaning up an art exhibition that was stopped in its tracks. The graffiti attack left eight transrail carriages and a locomotive with a whole new look. Police disturbed the night artists before they could finish work on their wide canvas. Hungry. They shouldn't be allowed in the house. Hi, my name is Elliot O'Donnell, probably better known under my graffiti name, which is Askew One. And uh, we're just here at the Tauranga Art Gallery checking out my first public gallery solo exhibition, Space Plus Time. So the show, um, basically it's a linear timeline, like a journey through, you know, my life as an artist. And um, it starts with this projection wall, which is um, kind of like talking about my career, you could say career going right back to when I was like a teenager and so some of my first run-ins with the law and a lot of my adventures with friends around the world. They keep out, enter at your own risk. On the other side it says I have a gun, we'll shoot. Wow. It says right there written, you you have been warned, you will be killed. See all this shit's good right here. In 2011, I did a residency called the Fountainhead Residency in Miami for a month, and uh, it was the first time I really, you know, turned my attention completely to making some sort of painting that was outside of the graffiti realm. Yeah, I basically started with a self-portrait. I had been through, like, I'd had, had a health scare that year. I wound up in the hospital, and they initially had diagnosed me as having had a stroke. And so the painting um, was basically sort of based on that, you know, the thunderclap headache, you know, uh, was what they called it. It's like a blood vessel in my right frontal lobe just kind of constricted and stopped all the blood flow and to the left side of my body. So this is a recreation of another work that's also on a private collection, um, painting of my friend Stelly. I thought this one was representative of kind of like the really bold, colourful stuff that I was doing at that time. I made a shift from this colour palette that I had been done, doing like earlier into these really kind of bright, vibrant colours. And this one was significant because this was a big break um, away from the colour. This is when I kind of reverted back into just exploring form, thinking about layering the patterns and everything underneath the faces and even the faces overlapping each other. I don't know if you can sort of see, but there's sort of several versions of her mouth, of her head wrap, uh, and her face is kind of there, central. There's also this kind of large circle and square kind of form, and everything's flipping from positive to negative. And this piece was exhibited uh, in a show uh, at Saatchi Gallery, and then later uh, in the Urban Art Biennial in Germany. Um, and it's the first time I've actually physically seen it hung in a space complete, which is really cool. So it's been around the world. My next massive kind of move was into this body of work, which is kind of the precursor to kind of what I'm doing now. And um, it was basically the first time I incorporated the street texture. And at this point, I kind of have a, had a hybrid approach of kind of merging the faces with the textures from the street. So, And this work here is still just a continuation of uh, that work, but it was a later one. It was um, it was a recreation of a piece from my show in De uh, Detroit, my last like kind of show of, uh, of of portraits. You can see I've kind of incorporated the street motif in and around this whole wall as well. Elements of graffiti, elements of pipe, and the kind of torn textures, you know, from things that have been ripped away. When I got to New York, I was pretty broke and um, I basically had to be resourceful and think about how to make work without you know, being able to buy the most expensive canvas or buy the plexiglass sheets and get them framed and do all of that. I just saw an abundance of street material that was layered so thick and kind of so ready for use you know, that I just thought, wow, this, this is something. You know? So I started being that embarrassing guy that was turning up everywhere with a big roll of posters whenever I went out with, uh, with my friends. And I basically um, would take them back to the studio and wet them 
and then collage them all together with uh, like a wheat paste and then kind of decollage them, tearing back at them, painting into them. I, I knew this was only a step to something else. The next step was kind of like these, which are, these are digital collages of the street texture that I kind of layer and play around with, remove things from you know them digitally with the eraser tool and stuff, and these are completely made on my phone. These particular ones are actually painted and then on the back of glass and then laser etched out and then painted in again. So yeah, that basically brings us through to these final three works. So these are basically made from 3D scans. I have a portable 3D scanner and I take scans from the environment. Uh, I create still life arrangements out of random objects that I find. And what I like about them is they take on this really naturally graffiti-like form, you know. I'm kind of exploring this idea of like, rather than portraiture by traditional means, you know, making a mass portrait of like a lot of people, people's movement through space and time, you know, which is why the show here is called Space and Time. So yeah, and that's basically a run through of the show.